Okay, here we are. Let's uh, take a look at this toy. It's pretty cute. Hey. Okay. Facts concerning the late Arthur Germain, part two. Arthur Germain was the son of Sir Alfred Germain and a music hall singer of unknown origin. When the husband and father deserted his family, the mother took the child to Germain House, where there was none left to object to her presence. She was not without notions of what a noble man's dignity should be, and saw to it that her son received the best education which limited money could provide. The family resources were now sadly slender, and Germain House had fallen into woeful disrepair. But young Arthur loved the old edifice and all its contents. He was not like any other Germain who had ever lived, for he was a poet and a dreamer. Some of the neighboring families who had heard tales of old Sir Wade, Germain's unseen Portuguese wife, declared that her Latin blood must be showing itself. But most persons merely sneered at his sensitiveness to beauty, attributing it to his music hall mother, who was socially unrecognized. The poetic delicacy of Arthur Germain was a more re remarkable because of his uncouth personal appearance. Most of the Germains had possessed a subtly odd and repellent cast, but Arthur's case was very striking. It is hard to say just what he resembled, but his expression, his facial angle, facial angle, and the length of his arms gave a thrill of repulsion to those who met him for the first time. It was the mind and character of Arthur Germain which atoned for his aspect. Gifted and learned, he took the highest honors at Oxford and seemed likely to redeem the intellectual fame of his family. Though of poetic rather than scientific temperament, he planned to continue the work of his forefathers in African ethnology and antiquities, utilizing the truly wonderful though strange collection of Sir Wade. With his fanciful mind, he thought often of the prehistoric civilization in which the mad explorer had so implicitly believed and would weave tale after tale about the silent jungle city mentioned in the latter's wilder, wilder notes and paragraphs. For the nebulous utterances concerning a nameless, unsuspected race of jungle hybrids, he had a peculiar feeling of mingled terror and attraction, speculation on the possible basis of such a fancy, and seeking to obtain light among the more recent data, data gleaned by his great-grandfather and Samuel Seton amongst the Angas. That's enough for today. Screw it.